Hello, this is Rich Bankhead and welcome to Electrical Circuits, section 301. And in this section, we're gonna talk about voltage divider circuits. And the most common application of voltage divider circuits are potentiometers. And so you see three different cases of potentiometers. First, you see the uh, turn potentiometers where it's got a dial or a knob and depending on the number of turns, the ones to the far left are 10 turns, ones to the center are single turn potentiometers. Then at the bottom we have a control pot, which is a rotary potentiometer. And then of course my favorite is a two axis parallax joystick, which we use for a lot of physical computing applications, which is a two directional uh, up, down, right, left potentiometers. It's got potentiometers in each direction which pro pro provide a variable voltage feedback. So moving right along, let's take a look at our first lecture example. And this is a voltage divider circuit. And it's characterized by two resistors, R1 and R2, in series supplied by a voltage source, Vs, here. And so we can, for this circuit, we can find the equivalent resistance, REQ, and that re equivalent resistance is equal to R1 plus R2. We know that the current through the two resistors in series, IS, is equal to VS over RE. Q, which is equal to the supply voltage over R1 plus R2. Now for the first resistor, R1, we know that Ohm's loss is V1 equals ISR1 equal to, from above, R1 times Vs over R1 plus R2, rearranging and Vs equal, oops, Vs times R1 over R1 plus R2. And this is an important result because it says that the voltage drop across R1 is proportional to the resistance of R1 divided by the total resistance. And we find the same thing, similar for R2, V2 equals ISR2 equal to VSR2 over R1 plus R2. And so this result is called the voltage divider, and the voltage divides proportionately according to the resistances for the first and the second resistor. And so typically, even though this is a voltage divider equation, I typically never remember this equation. I just know that the voltage drop across V1 is just R1 divided by the total voltage drop. I'm sorry, R1 divided by the total resistance, R1 plus R2, multiplied by Vs, the total voltage drop. And so moving right along, we, we get to our next example. And this example is a potentiometer circuit that we showed previously. And so potentiometers have values associated with them. And so the value of a potentiometer is equal to R1 plus R2. And then there's a sliding scale connector in the middle that changes the ratio of R1 to R2. And so a 1K pot, which we have here, as we turn the dial changes this R1 to R2 ratio. So in this case, we have a five, five volt supply to our potentiometer. And so V, whoops, wrong pin, I apologize. Uh, so Vs equals five volts here. And our V out voltage is going to be 3.3 volts. And so that is also VR2. And so from our voltage divider, we know that V2 is equal to Vs times R2 over R1 plus R2. And so 
substituting our above or our known values, we know that 3.3 .3 volts equals 5 times R2 over R1 plus R2, which is 1,000. And so we can solve for R2 in this case, and we know that R2 is 660 ohms. But the question asked for R1, but R1 plus R2 is 1,000. So I know that R1 plus R2 equals 1,000. Subtracting, I find that R1 equals 340 ohms. And so for this voltage divider, R1 is 340, R2 is 660. And so if I have five volts in, if I wanna get a 3.3 volt out, then these are the resistor values that I need. And then commonly, we use voltage divider circuits to control voltage in a circuit as our simplest form of our voltage control. Okay, moving right along. What if I had the same voltage divider circuit previously, but I wanna put a load across it? And, and let's take a look at how, how this circuit behaves. And first of all, notice that I have two resistors in series. I have R1 in series with R2 and RL in parallel. So if I combine R2 and RL, it acts as a single resistor in series with R1. And again, the key to voltage dividers is resistors in series. And so we know that R2 in parallel with RL is equal to R2 times RL over R2 plus RL. And so that is in series with R1 and so we have R1 plus the quantity R2 RL over R2 plus RL. And again, this, this series resistor says voltage divider. So let's find, apply our voltage divider equation where we know that V out is equal to Vs times R2 RL, R2 plus RL over R1 plus R2 RL over R2 plus RL. And so this and this now the part on this part is quite messy, so we can do some algebra. And I won't do the algebra here, I'll leave that for you. But a little bit of algebra significantly simplifies R2 over R1 times 1 plus R2 over RL. plus R2. And so this is the result for the above circuit here. And so now let's look at some of the cases. What if RL goes to infinity? What happens? So this is RL. So as RL goes to infinity, this term moves towards zero because anything divided by infinity is zero. So one plus zero is one. So then V out equals Vs times R2 over R1 plus R2. And so if we look, and so this is our general voltage divider. So if we scroll back up here and look at our circuit, as this goes to infinity, I equals zero ohms because there's infinite resistance here, so no current here. And so it's like this is, is open circuit or not connected, right? And so then we're just left with our normal voltage divider, which is the result which we would expect, right? If there's no current here, we get back our voltage divider. Perfect. 
moving along, the case where R L is much, much greater than R2. So it's a lot higher resistance. And so that would mean that we'd have low current through RL. And so we find that because of this V0 over Vs, the ratio of the output voltage, this, this voltage, this V out, is not disturbed, is undisturbed, right? So this ratio is un is undisturbed by RL. And so when we use this circuit to control voltage, the key here is that RL must be great, much, much greater than, than R2. So, so the current is low through this loop and so that this doesn't disturb this voltage. If RL is equivalent to R2, then V out is disturbed and then our voltage divider doesn't hold true. But if RL is much greater then uh, we get fairly good voltage control for this type of circuit. Okay, moving right along now, we get to lecture example four, and I want to determine the voltage drop across the 15 ohm resistor using a voltage divider. So I want to know that this voltage right here, plus, oops, apologize, minus plus, and I want to know V15 ohm. And so notice that if I look at the equivalent resistance of the circuit, I find that I have 37.5 plus 25 in parallel with 10 plus 15. And so here I have the first part in series with the second part. And so I can find the equivalent resistance of the second part. So 25, 25 in parallel with 10 plus 15 is 25. So really this circuit is 37 and a half plus 12.5. And this plus 12.5 gets me to the V plus minus across the 25 ohm resistor. And so V25 is equal to 40 volts times 12.5 over 37.5 plus 12.5. Solving for the math, that's equal to 10 volts. And so I know that the green voltage drop is 10 volts. Once I know that, then I can look at this and say, hey, if that's 10 volts, this also is 10 volts, but the circuit to the right is a voltage divider. And so I can solve for V15 is equal to 10 times 15 over 10 plus 15, which will be equal to six volts. And so I know that this V15 is equal to six volts. And so I, I solved it using two voltage dividers, one to find the green voltage and then to find the V15 voltage using another voltage divider. And this is a lot simpler than using a brute force method using um, Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. Looking at a little bit more complicated problem, if I want to determine the voltage drop across the 30 ohm resistor, and again, I'm looking for resistors in series, so the, the total equivalent resistance of the circuit would be 30 plus and end up with two paths in parallel. So this path in parallel with this path, right? So I have two paths in parallel. And so I end up the first path, two plus 27 in parallel with 54. plus 10 plus 15 plus 35. And so 
in series again with that 30, right? So I can solve for these. 27 and 54 make 18 plus 2. I'm sorry, I apologize. This should be parallel. So I have, this is 18, 2 plus 18, 20 in parallel with, add that sum, 60 plus 30 out front. And so solving this, I get 30 plus 15. So I have a 30 and 15 in series. And so even though the problem doesn't state it, I apologize, Vs equals 675 volts here. So I'm gonna end up with a voltage divider across the two pieces and I wanna know the 30 ohm. So I scroll up, I find that V30 ohm is equal to the supply voltage times the voltage divider, 30 over 30 plus 15, and that's going to be equal to 450 volts. And in this case, and so very nice solution, combining and in series resistors for a voltage divider. So. Moving to our next example, let's say I wanted to know the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor. Well, I already know that this voltage drop plus minus is 450. And so then our next voltage drop here around to here and all of this is the same node down here, so plus, minus. So the green voltage drop, V is equal to 675 minus the 450 is equal to 2, 225. And so I end up with resistors in series. Again, so I can do V10 ohm is equal to the supply voltage 225 times 10 over 10 plus 15 plus 35 is equal to 37.5 volts. And so in this case, I'm doing a voltage divider across three resistors, but again, it's, a, it's the same result as I would across two. And so I find that the V across the 10 ohm is 37 and a half volts. And so this concludes our lecture on voltage dividers. And tune in for our next lecture, which will be on current dividers.